Uh, we're gonna make so. we're gonna make a variation of traditional um, Cuban flan, which is my specialty, KN flan. All it is is a slight adjustment to the regular recipe. Um, let me read off to you what you guys will need before we begin. You will need six eggs. You will need one and a half. I'll get to that in a second. We, you will need one and a half cups of sugar. You will need one can of condensed milk, that's 14 ounces. You will need uh, either two cans of evaporated milk or, like we'll be doing, one and a half cups of whole milk. You will need, uh, tradi the traditional recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract. For the cayenne flan, you actually back off the vanilla extract, only put a half a teaspoon in, and then put, let's say, a teaspoon and a quarter of good, fresh cayenne uh, ground uh, red pepper. Uh, I'll probably be doing a little bit more like a teaspoon and a half, because that's how much I like the cayenne. But there is a preparation process, and yes, we're short in eggs, so ignore the fact that we're scaling everything back. Uh, if you use those quantities, it will just fill the top of a nine inch cake pan. First thing you do is preheat an oven to 375. Then you're gonna set up a double boiler. This is the way the double boiler works. Find something that this pan will fit completely into. And then put some water in it. So that when the pan is placed inside the whole thing comes up to at least halfway, preferably about three quarters of the way up. I need a little more water. Hi, I'm Jeff. Yeah. I'll keep this thing on. Fastest egg eater in the West, or egg cracker in the West. Okay, so that's a little bit more water. Yeah, that's perfect. You can kind of see uh, it's a little bit higher than half. So now that that's done, take this out. The water goes in the oven to heat up. water will be boiling hot by the time we do this next step. Okay, next step is we're going to caramelize one cup of sugar. This is just one cup plain white sugar. Put your stove on high heat. Get a wooden thing like this and a hot pad, very important. This is going to get very hot at about 500 degrees, so you need to have a hot pad or you'll burn yourself. Can we try this with the flan? Mm, yes. Tomorrow when it comes out. Yeah. Okay, so it takes a while for it to heat up. When you see, when you start to see it melt, what you want to do is you want to just turn the pan so you get a nice even heat. On an electric oven, I find I have to press this down sometimes to get the pan in contact with the heat. This, will, this whole thing will take like five minutes once it gets going. Oh, and make sure you have like mitten pads. Things. Yeah, you need hot pads. Cause last time he I burned myself. He burned himself, and last time it was like a blister. It was, it was not good. Yeah, this gets sugar gets very very hot. Oh, and I'm also the official measurer. So what and do you got you over here? See, you got eggs over here? Yeah. Five eggs. As you can see, no shell. No, no shell. shell. And look, clearly there's no spoon in the area. And look. It, this, it's perfectly clean. So. Good job. Okay, so we got some action going on here. What we have right here is the very beginning of the sugar beginning to melt. When you see that, just constantly get unmelted sugar going over the hot spots. You're just stirring. It will end up chunking up a little bit, but trust me, as the sugar gets hot, it'll all melt. That's just the uh, thing. Let me know that the... Um, the oven is heated, I think. So you see, now it's kind of happening faster, so we might want to back off on the heat a little bit. You don't want to let it smoke up too much. There we go. It's starting to heat up. This is a bit of an art, but basically you just want to keep it in motion. And usually I like to do two flan at a time. And then you can kind of, once the burner is the right heat, it goes very quickly. What is the plural of flan? Flan. You don't say flans. You don't do, you don't do two flans? I do two flan. You do two flan. Yeah, the plural flan is flan, I believe. I can help it. I love it. It's not flan eye? <laughs> I don't think so. 
Flame. No. You don't say fla flanes. Probably in Spanish it's flanes. Flanes. Okay, you see how this is really great. This is this is very clear. As it gets hotter, it's going to turn brown. You don't want to get black um, caramel because that tastes icky. But you would like it to have a bit of brown uh, color. That would be ideal. So we're going to let this heat up. See how it's really turning? It's getting very hot now. And it's turning very quickly into caramel. Just try and get all the chunks into the hot part. That makes it all melt smoothly. Or you can crunch it up. Do that. Mash it flat. That will help. This is probably the most time consuming step of the whole process is just making the caramel. But what it's going to happen is, the way it's going to cook is, now it's a little hot, um, this is going to be the top part of the flan. The flan will cook here, that will be the top part when we flip it out. See how all the chunks are almost gone? We are almost done. One second, Max, I'm kind of busy right now. See how it's getting nice and brown? We're going to let it brown just a little bit. Try not to let it boil. Watch, if I stop, it's going to start boiling. So this is perfect. We're going to let it get a little bit darker in color and then set it aside. So I just turned the heat off because the electric stove will go for quite a long time. This is the perfect color right there. You want it to look kind of like whiskey. Done. Let it cool. Next step, we mix. So, uh, Max, let me take over. Max has done five eggs. You should be doing six eggs. Just, just break up the yolks a little bit. Now, this should be one and a half cups. We've backed it off slightly because we're a little short. We're next going to put in the condensed milk. Ooh, this is Max's and, favorite part. And I always get to lick the you lid. You get to lick the lid. But if, if everything goes wrong, I get to lick the whole can. Yep. And there's a trick to how I do this. Uh, the trick involves this. Okay, oh, here's the lid for Max. Nice... Careful because it's a little yeah. sharp. So we dunk in all the evaporated milk, mm. or the condensed milk rather. Now it's here's the trick. Your shirt, dude. Yeah. <laughs> As it should be. Here's the trick. You got a lot of condensed milk left over. So when you're measuring out the cup and a half of milk, do it this way. There's not quite a cup. Here's a cup of milk. What you do is we're aiming for a cup and a half of whole milk. Well, actually a cup and a quarter because we're scaling back a little bit. So you just mix that into the condensed milk. Take your spoon. That's how you get all the condensed milk out. It's useless to try and scrape it out because it's like trying to scrape maple syrup out of a can. So you do that, do it again. And now because we're scaling back, you would want to put in a half a cup. I'm going to scale back and put in about a quarter cup. That's about a quarter. You don't have to. And in it goes. And then lastly, we mix in the half a teaspoon of vanilla. This is the coolest part. Looks like an explosion. And one and a half teaspoons of cayenne. Oh, also when I said you don't have to do this part, I meant wash my hands and lick the lid. You don't have to do that. I just dried this because I don't like it to stick. So this is a half a teaspoon measure. I'm going to put in three of these. one and this is the good stuff if you have friends that like hot food use maybe a teaspoon and a half if you got wimps who like bland food don't put in more than a teaspoon Depends on how or, or don't do a can or flan. don't do can flan at all there is that you could do a traditional flan I'll have um, both recipes posted very key thing make sure the sugar is fully dissolved and that there are no big chunks of cayenne when you do this by now the, uh, the, the, the caramel has been cooling, so it'd be very easy to put this right on camera. So what I'm doing is just letting the sugar melt. The moment it's kind of all melted, now I'm going to kind of beat it a little bit. Just to try and make everything consistent. 
See, I have a big chunk of can. We need to stomp on these three. See, like a one, two, three chunks. Just mash them flat. You don't want any chunks of can because otherwise your guests will have surprises. When this gets, uh, you'll see tomorrow when we finish this off, there will be fruit topping, possibly even some uh, some shaved coconut, and we'll top it off with a little Grand Marnier. It'll be a very lovely thing. Okay, so that's about the right consistency. So what we do is, see how that's set now? It's, it's, it's still flowing a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We just basically put this on that. It's kind of like glass, you hear it. See how this doesn't quite come up to the top? When you do this with six eggs and the proper value, the proper amounts, it'll fill the pan very nicely. Then finally, oh, we ruined the other one. It goes in the oven. Watch your head, Charlie. See how this is nice and bubbly? The water is nice and bubbly right now. So we just drop this into the water very carefully. Try not to spill any flour into the water. And then you push it flat, you push it in, and it wants to bake for 45 minutes, at which point we're going to do a doneness test. So when you next see this video, you'll see us testing it. Clock. Timer. 45 minutes. 375, yeah. Okay. So when we next come back, it will be 45 minutes later, and we will be doneness testing it to make sure it's done 45 minutes from now. It's been 45 minutes and we are now going to apply our Dunnest test. You will need a plain, non serrated kitchen knife, hot pad. Um, Charlie, move your butt. Sorry. He loves the heat right here. So, this is the Dunnest test. If we take it out and we insert this and it comes out kind of like with lots of that, that I'm not going to count, then it's not done. Yeah, this could use another five minutes. See how it's coming out with little globs? Glob, 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 glob. This is not done. So we'll wait another five minutes, let it cook a little bit more. You also may want to add a little water sometimes if it's really low, but we've got plenty of water going. The water should be boiling ever so lightly. We're going to keep this going at 375. For some odd reason, it looks like it's canceled. Bake. Three, seven, five. So we'll do this again in five minutes and you probably won't even view this because it'll be edited out. We tested the um, flan just a few minutes ago, but I want to show you what you'll need. You'll need a regular knife and hot pad. And what you'll want to do after the 45 minutes is up is pull the flan out. Just insert the knife into the top, just right around the middle. See how it's kind of came out with a little bit of a schmutz, but that doesn't really count. You kind of do this, it kind of comes out clean. See that? This is done. We'll probably, we'll probably post the example from five minutes ago where it wasn't quite done. So this is perfect now. Take the entire kit and caboodle out of the oven. This is where you'll typically burn yourself if you're not careful. Some of the water will have boiled off. So now with a, a hot pad and maybe a knife, you can just grab the edge, pull it out, let it cool for a couple of minutes. That's going to go in the fridge. I like to cover it with the serving pan that I'm going to serve it in later. So we're going to flip it into this plate later on to serve it. As soon as that cools, refrigerate it for a minimum of four hours. Recently I've discovered it's way better to just refrigerate the whole thing overnight. Next thing you'll see is you'll see how we take it out and we garnish it and we serve it up and it'll be a beautiful thing. That'll be tomorrow. We're going to let that refrigerate overnight. See you tomorrow. It has been officially one day. Yes. What we have here is flan that has been chilling for one day. And now we're going to pull it out of the um, pie tin. What you want to do is you want to separate, get it just a knife and separate like this around the edge. But there's something else you need to do too. Okay, this isn't enough. If we just take it out right now, it's going to most likely stick. So what I find helpful is just put it on a hot stove for about 30 seconds. 
And that, by, with a little bit of heat, what that'll do is that'll make the sugar turn into a kind of a syrup. And so we're just waiting for it to get a little bit hot on the bottom. I'm zooming in on the okay. flan. And I'm just going to get a little, get a little heat on it. Delicious flan. Okay, that should be enough. I think, let me see. Yeah, it's starting to get a little warm. So now we take it back over to the plate. We invert the whole thing. And let's see if it comes out properly. Uh, it kind of, kind of, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Kind of, oh! Beautiful, lovely flan. Now the last step. Oh, and incidentally, there'll be a whole lot of syrup left over. Oh yeah, I usually lick it. It's nice to, if you can get any of it spooned off, it's nice to have a little bit of extra caramel. This will come off if you just uh, put some hot water on it for a little bit. Or boil it for a bit. Can I, can I have some? Can I have one? Yeah, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to decorate, decorate it. What I have here is little pieces of peach. And I'm just going to spread those around. Here, hold on. Here's this little plate. Yep. Hmm, so, do we have enough peach? Let's find out. How many do you think we'll need? Typically, only about a half a peach will do a whole flan. Depends on oh, how thick. And I see. Worst comes to worst, you just have to slice a few more pieces off. So maybe three quarters of a peach is all you need. Like so. And then in the gaps, I like to put blackberries. Look at that. Look how pretty that Ooh. is. And then if you have shaved coconut. <gasps> oh, one tipped spray. over a blackberry. Oh, no, never mind. They're all tipped over. Never mind. Um, what you want to do is just put a little bit of shaved coconut on. <clears throat> and finally. I don't like coconut. Okay, we won't use any shaved coconut. Finally, when you're serving, to give it just <clears throat> a little bit of extra flavor. Do but each slice should be, you know, about one peach slice in one of these. Just put about a teaspoon or half a <coughs> teaspoon of Grand Marnier over it. Warning! It. <coughs> Warning! You probably don't put these on kids. Yeah, not for <coughs> kids. But for adults, put just a half a teaspoon of Grand Marnier on each slice. And um, actually, I'm, I'm getting a coconut-free shaved. Uh, no coconut shaved. <coughs> and no whatever this wine thing is. It's alcohol. All right, thanks so much. You've now learned, now you've learned how to make a flan. We're going to go cut it up and eat it. Say goodbye.